So let's talk a bit now about current sinks. This is a lot easier to understand at first than a current source. So that's why I chose to start with the sink instead of the source, which is more common. So um, first things first, the idea of a current sink is that basically you always draw the same amount of current from a source no matter um, the voltage that it's at. If you put, for example, if you have a rail, voltage rail, with a resistor, this, the current flowing through here, is going to be dependent on this voltage right here, by Ohm's law. Uh, the problem is, if this voltage changes in for example, as we, we've seen before with our other um, circuits, the current through this changes as well. That's why when you're biasing the transistor, you always have to keep in mind that the voltage that you choose to appear at the emitter will dictate the amount of current flowing through the transistor. But there is a way to make those things independent, so that way you can, for example, with the emitter follower, you can just bias it at the midpoint of your voltage rails, so that no matter how big your, um, your voltage input, your source is, the, the swing, it will always take care of the job and won't uh, uh, clip, it won't distort. Okay? So for that, you need a current sink, so that no matter what voltage you apply, it will always draw the exact same current. So the most, the, the most simple form of current sink would be this. So you have your NPN transistor here. You have a resistor here. Okay. And then you have like something, some source. Let's see. Let's even say this is a device under test. UT. Say you want to, for example, test a, a power supply, you can do this so that no matter what voltage is set in the power supply, it will draw the exact same current. And just to make things easier, since we're talking about power supplies, let's make this 1 ohm. Okay. So if we make this 1 ohm, whatever voltage we put in here will appear here. Remember about the voltage drop, okay? So if, for example, we put um, 1.7 volts here, we get one volt here. One volt across a one ohm resistor means that we'll have one amp flowing through here. And it doesn't matter the, um, the voltage here, it will always draw one amp. The only thing that you gotta keep in mind is that this voltage has to be greater than the voltage that is here, which is in this play in this case, let's put like 1.7 volts here. In this case, we're going to have one volt here. So we are drawing one amp. Uh, so the voltage right here should be the one volt that's at the emitter plus the VCE sat, which is right here. The VCE sat because it's the saturation voltage of your transistor. So um, this point should be like, for example, let's say the VC sat is uh, 0.2 volts, which is pretty typical. So this, the VC sat equals um, 200 millivolts. Okay, so this point has to be at least 1.2 volts for this to work. If this starts getting lower than 1.2 volts, you start getting into the VC set region, and then that's going to dominate the voltage that appears here at the emitter, no matter how high you place the voltage at the base. And then you start getting into trouble because you can't have the voltage at the base way higher than the voltage at the emitter. We can even look at like the data sheet. This is the PNP, but it's okay. Um, if we see here, it's somewhere, here it is, emitter base voltage, can't be greater than 5 volts, so if you have, for example, like this is at 1 volt, so this is going to be at 800 millivolts, 
and you put, for example, 5 volts, like 6 volts here, you are a 0.2 volts higher here, and it will start to damage this transistor. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, so, if we respect this voltage according to the emitter plus the VC set, uh, it will always be drawing the exact same current here, no matter how this changes. Now, this requires you to use um, uh, some sort of reference here, because if you're just putting like um, a resistor divider with this um, your supply rail, there's a problem because it's still dependent on your supply rail. So if this supply swings, you also get a swing here and your current will change here. So one way to make this rugged is, for example, to just add either a Zener diode or a another diode, a regular diode. Okay, so let's draw this here. Same circuits as poor. Okay, and then just got whatever you need here, okay, let's just draw the box again, all right, whatever circuit you have, for example, your emitter follower would be here. Now, here, we, there are two things that we can do, for example, we can put a diode here, like this. Uh, not just not just a regular diode. You could put like for example a, a, an LED here, that would uh, would be like a constant voltage, okay. But something that's very common as well would be just to put two silicon diodes which have um, a similar voltage drop to the base emitter junction, because this way you have then one base emitter junction which turns off, turns on the, the transistor, and another base emitter junction here, so that 0.6 volts of the, or 0.7 volts of the diode appears here. So I have one just to overcome the VBE, and then another one that's actually going to be the voltage that appears in here. Then you just put a resistor here, 2V plus, you calculate this resistor again so that the current flowing through the base, according to the HFE and all that, is uh, less than the current flowing through this whole thing, okay? Very simple. So this way, you will have um, 0.6 volts here, 0.6 volts here. I know I'm, I'm switching between 0 0.7, 0 0.6, it's just like... I've learned to do it with 0.6, then I started doing with 0.7, and most transistors are like 0.65, but hey, what matters is that you know what you're doing, and just, just approximate this, because in the real world, this, these things are always going to be changing all around, and just keep that in mind when you're designing these things, and always put like a margin, okay, on everything. So, what happens then is that this point is at 2.5 volts, this is going to be at 0.6 volts. So you can choose a resistor. For example, in this case, let's say we wanted to draw the same thing um, as we were drawing here. So if we put, instead of a one ohm resistor here, we put a point, no, let's, let's do this differently. Let's say we still put the one ohm here. Because if we had just put a, 0.6 ohm and then just be silly putting a 0.6 ohms on something. So one ohm here, then we'll be drawing um, 0.6 amps through this resistor because you have uh, 0.6 over in one ohm. So we'll be drawing 0.6 amps through this whole thing, no matter the voltage here. Okay, so this is one way of making this circuit more rugged and more stable no matter your um your supply voltage this can swing this will generally stay the same so you always have a constant voltage here so you can calculate the resistor to give you the current that you need here okay that's one way another way of doing the same thing that we've done here 
is to use two transistors in this configuration. Like this. This is basically the same thing as this. Sorry. Uh, this is your, like, your whatever here. Sorry about that. Um, this is basically the same thing here, but with one difference. Here, you always have VBE instead of the 0.6 or whatever voltage you decide here. If you use the Zener, whatever, just calculate for here. In this case, it's constant at VBE because this transistor is going to keep it that way. Let's see how. So, no matter what happens here, what voltage goes through here, whenever this voltage, at the voltage this nodes reaches VBE, this transistor will start to conduct. When it starts to conduct, it will pull this node here low, okay? Because this resistor is in series with the supply rail, so a current will start to flow. Instead of going through to this transistor, it's just start, it will be diverted and will start going through this transistor. This way, whatever happens here, the voltage here cannot go higher than the VB of this transistor. So it's constant. The good thing about this is that whenever you are like designing something like this, you're probably already using some MPN transistor of some variety on another part of the circuit. So you can just reuse it here. It already has a known VBE. So the same thing that happened um, here and here, you also have to keep in mind here. This resistor has to be uh, dimensioned so that it provides sufficient current for this transistor to be turned on, but that also excessive current doesn't flow to this transistor. So just keep that in mind, okay? And remember that the voltage at this node, so that you can calculate the power dissipated here and the current flowing through this transistor, for, through this resistor, is always going to be uh, the VB of this transistor here to, the VB, to this node. And since this node is always at VBE, it's just two VBEs, okay? So to calculate the current flowing through here, you just get your supply rail, uh, minus the two VBEs divided by the resistance, you get the current, okay? Again, very simple stuff. And this is a lot better than, than this design because it's, first of all, like, it's a feedback loop, okay? So this voltage will never rise higher than the VBE of this transistor, no matter, really, no matter what happens, because, for example, some diodes, uh, maybe, especially with Zener diodes, their, their Zener voltage changes according to the current flowing through them. So if this rail swings by a lot, you get a lot of difference here of current, and then you get a different Zener voltage here, which affects your current here. These diodes, it's, it's not a lot, you don't get a lot of swing, but this is a lot more robust, and it's a lot more compact, and you can, for example, if you're using the same transistor, for example, when you're designing the, when you're using a current source or can sync for your um, uh, preamplifier stage or stuff like that, you can just use the same matched transistors here and then you can bond them together just so that you get like some, uh, some sort of thermal feedback between them. Actually, that's not like really advised because now that I'm, uh, I just had a brain fart because if you bond them together, then this will be your chance. So it's, it's better to just have them as far apart as possible. Sorry about that. Yeah, just had a breath. I was I was thinking about like when you have a uh, output transistors on uh, an amplifier. So sorry, yeah, just forget about what I said. Um, but the good thing is that you can just use a small signal transistor here, coupled with, for example, like a Tip Thirty One here to provide the massive amount of current, and you don't have to worry about anything. Okay, so this is usually what you are going to see on designs. This is usually what you see um, on power amplifiers and stuff like that. You also see this variety quite a bit, since it's uh, sometimes it's a bit cheaper. But yeah, I, I, I always tend to use this because this is always an, a given. It's a lot more stable and it's, it's all around better in my opinion.
So yeah. Now that we've seen current sinks, let's go to the opposite side of things, to current sources. Okay. So the principle of operation here is exactly the same but reversed. In the previous example, we, we had um, a supply or whatever here, and we were sinking a constant amount of current. Now we want to supply a constant amount of current, no matter the load that we have. So, let's start with the same example as we did before, and um, uh, go through the, the, the same step that we did, just so that whatever we learn here, we can apply to the opposite side of things, okay? So, first of all, let's start with the first example, the uh, resistive divider one. Okay, so we have the resistor that's going to set our uh, source current. Now we have a PNP transistor, because since we are sourcing current, we need to use a PNP because it's going to be on the high side. Then here you have your load, okay, our load, and goes to ground okay so what, are, what we are going to be doing here is exactly the same as before the only difference is that no matter the load here it can be like 1 ohm it can be 10 ohms 100 ohms whatever it's always going to be um, so, uh, sourcing the same amount of current so the same amount of current is going to be uh, passing through this resistor this load no matter what so if this was an ideal current source the voltage here would have to rise to basically infinity, no matter the resistor here. It could be like one mega ohm. If we want like one amp going through mega one, one mega ohm, it would have to rise to whatever voltage it needed to provide one amp through here. Since this is not an ideal current source, uh, you will always be limited by the your supply rail minus the voltage at the emitter minus the VC sat. Okay, so keep that in mind. Same thing that we did before. So, let's draw the resistor divider here, okay, same thing as before, nothing changes. The only difference here is that now things are going to be reversed, right? So, let's say, again, to make the math a lot easier, we have one ohm here, okay, and we want to make sure that for example, one amp is flowing through this resistor. To get that, again, Ohm's law always, we need a voltage differential across this resistor, one ohm, of one volt. If we have one volt across this resistor, so let's say if our supply rail is uh, 12 volts and we have 11 volts here, this means that there is one volt across this resistor, which means no matter what, one amp we will be flowing through here. So how do we do that? Very simple. First we need to make sure that this node right here is at let's say V plus minus one volt. That would ensure one volt across this resistor. How to do that? The same way that we did with the NPN transistor. So we have a VBE here so the base voltage should be greater than VB. Oh, in this case, sorry, it's the opposite because in the PMP everything is reversed. So it should be uh, more negative than VB in order to turn this transistor on. So, very simple. The voltage at this point to get one volt or whatever voltage you want here. So very simple. So it is the V plus. Okay or V plus minus the VB minus whatever voltage we want to appear here. In this case, for example, one volt. Okay. And this is the voltage that should be appearing in here. For example, if we want one, uh, 11 volts here, which means a one volt differential here, we need to make sure that this point is at 12 volts minus the VB, let's say 0.6 volt. So that will give us 11.4 uh, minus 1 volt. 
which means this point should be at 10.4 volts to get 11 volts here and get the differential. And by Ohm's law, if there is one volt here, there's one amp flowing through here, one amp will be flowing through here, and one amp will be flowing through this load. No matter the load, if, we, if this was a, a, another one ohm resistor, in this case, a voltage would, would uh, develop here to make sure that this stays at one amp, no matter what. If you increase this by another order of magnitude, like for example, you go for a 10 volt, uh, a 10 ohm resistor over here, the same would still be true. We, only, we would only have like 10 volts here, but then you gotta remember about VC sat. In this case, I think we're all right. But you would very quickly, if, there was, uh, if you wanted 10 volts at this node, very quickly be running into the limitations of the setup, okay? So, very simple, but again, we still have that same problem that we had before, since this uh, uh, node here is dependent on your supply rail. If your supply rail swings, you also have a swing here, swing here, and the voltage here will not be maintained, and you get a different current depending on the supply rail. In order to do that, we need to decouple this from the supply rail. How do we do that? Same thing as before. What I'm going to show here is very common. You, you see a lot on um, power amplifiers and stuff like that. So you have your V plus. Okay. Then you go through one diode drop, another diode drop. Then this goes to a resistor. Okay, and this goes into the base of a P and P transistor. And here you have your resistor that will set your load current plus, and in the collector of this resist this transistor, you get your R load. Okay, same stuff as before. Same thing we did here, okay, nothing changed. So, no matter the V+, plus, we will always have two diode drops here, so let's assume like 0.6 volt, 0.6 of a volt. So this node will always be at V+, plus minus the two diode drops, in this case like 1.2 volts, okay. Which means that we'll have like one diode drop will basically be equivalent to the diode drop here in the base emitter junction of this PNP transistor, which would barely turn it on. And the other one will provide the reference voltage that will appear here. So here you will have 0 0.6 volts according to this drop here, right? So you make sure that no matter what, oh, made a mistake here, it should be V plus minus. 0.6 of a volt, because like the PNP is always referenced to the plus rail. So you always have a voltage differential here of 0.6 volts. So you can calculate this resistor so that you always get uh, uh, your fixed amount of current. So let's say if we want, again, uh, same thing, for, if we make this a 1 ohm resistor, we would have 0.6 of an amp here. Okay, it's very simple. Uh, for example, if we wanted like 100 milliamps, this would be six ohms. Again, very common, very simple. Same thing that we did here. It will maintain a current, in this case, it will supply a current to this load, no matter what happens here to our supply rail. Again, this resistor should be chosen so that you have enough current flowing through here to also feed the base of this transistor, okay? Always keep that in mind. So now, this is a very rugged thing. You can use it to your heart's content. It will always be very stable, no matter your supply voltage. But, as we did before with the current sinks, we can do the same thing and have uh, basically VB here so that it is a lot simpler and you only use uh, another transistor instead of having to resort to also having diodes. Let's start with drawing. Same thing that we did before. We have plus here. 
this goes to the emitter of your first PMP transistor, okay, which goes into a resistor. This, in turn, goes to this resistor, which will set your actual constant current. Okay. And this point feeds into again another PNP transistor. Okay. This goes into our load, right? So, as you can see, it's basically the same thing that we had here. The only difference is that now we're sourcing current. Okay, so, same things apply here. Here, you will have a voltage differential of VBE of this transistor right here, because whenever you start, uh, whenever st the circuit starts up, you can see that, um, a voltage will appear here, it will appear in the base of this transistor, which will start to conduct, it will start to turn it on. By doing that, it will supply uh, a voltage to the base of this transistor, and in turn, this transistor will start to turn on and power load. As soon as this voltage gets, tries to get above this, the voltage differential VBE, this transistor will just turn on harder, which will make this transistor in turn shut off and we'll keep this feedback stable meaning that no matter what we'll always have VB across this resistor it's exactly the same thing that we did before you calculate this resistor for example let's say the VB is a 0.6 of a volt if you put in one ohm resistor here same thing you'll have 0.6 amps this way you don't need to use the the, the, the two diodes, you always have a constant voltage here, you only get one transistor more in your design, you get all the ruggedness that we've seen before, and everything, now much more compact in my opinion design, so it's exactly the same thing we did here, and here, this time for sourcing current, no matter what happens here, you always get a constant current through this load. Again. The only thing is that you always have to be mindful of is that you have here a VCE set and this node here will always be at VBE. So the voltage here can never go above your V plus minus this VBE here minus VCE set. That's the only thing that you have to keep in mind for. So now you can both source and sync currents. You will always see the circuit on the high side of something, feeding, for example, uh, an amplifier stage or whatever. And this you will always see on the low side of your circuit, providing a constant current or something. Okay. So now let's combine these two designs, especially like the current sync, for instance, with what we've seen before with the meter follower.